I think part of it is that we have been separated, you know, physically, like those rituals of connection that we've, we're used to, um, where we're meeting together at certain times and doing certain things together and recognizing one another and our connection. We haven't had those, even though we've been doing them maybe online, our church has been online um, for, you know, since last March, they're back face to face now. Um, but that's missing. And I do think that is part of it. I don't think it's the whole thing, but I do think that's part of it is that um, so Brene Brown is a social work faculty member and a writer, and she says it's hard to hate close up. And I think we haven't been close up to anybody in a long time. And so we're, we're doing this thing where we're uh, like the trading memes with each other on Facebook kind of thing, where we're just seeing things, but at a distance, instead of seeing each other face to face and doing these, these practices that connect us where maybe it would feel, it would still feel like an issue, but we would feel more connected at the beginning so that we could talk through or work through our differences. I, I think that this physical distancing has had a pretty profound effect on us and our communities in ways that we, we don't really fully understand even. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with that. I always, I've had to remind myself at so many points during the pandemic is that people don't talk in person the way they talk on Twitter or on, you know, Facebook, like it just doesn't happen. And um, I can remember, um, so I've worked as a hospice chaplain for a long time and I go to people's homes and I would get to their house, like the, I would have made the appointment, you know, on the phone and I would get there and they might have a sign of a political person that I know, you know, that's completely, you know, not mine, or might have a Confederate flag. And so I get there and I'm like, I don't think they know I'm black. Or <laughs> they did not realize that when they made the appointment. But I would get in the house and after a little bit of awkwardness or whatever, it would always be okay. Like we, like I can remember this gentleman, I get to his house. He is just like Confederate flagged up. I go inside, like that is, that's what's in his house, all his hats and stuff. But then we start talking about his terminal diagnosis and his family and um, his church. And like, I'm, you know, like there was real tenderness there and real like humanness there. Um, and so I forget that sometimes. And even, even like, I, like I just said, like if we don't agree on the issues, like I don't wanna be there. But then there, I've also seen over and over at the bedside of people who are dying or grieving that there is just, there is this connection. Um, and so I always pray that after that, you've, we've, we, you've, you've been able to see a black woman. And so often like the story that I love is I went to um, a home and the family, like they stop and they're like, you don't look like a chaplain. And I'm like, yeah, but I, you know, I'm the chaplain. And <laughs> one of the gentlemen in the family said, I didn't expect a chaplain that looked like Rudy Huxtable. And that <laughs> always cracks me up. Like I was like, that's so random, but okay. <laughs> It's so strange. <laughs> I would take it. But even after that, like after we've gotten that out of the out of the way, like there was some ministry that was able to happen. 